Hello everybody, welcome back to Mark's Beer Reviews. Today we've got something a little out of the ordinary. <laughs> um, it's a lager, but it's in a dog food tin. <laughs> Look at the size of that. That is, that tin is about, or this can is about 25 centimeters tall, and the diameter is probably 10 centimeters. It's absolutely massive. It's obviously a litre can. I know this is done the rounds on YouTube a little bit. I didn't, I wasn't aware of it if I'm honest. And it was only when I sort of Googled it that a couple of YouTube videos popped up, but it's a litre of premium. I'm sure it's a premium on the can. Well, it's a litre of Danish lager, anyway, Royal Export Danish Lager. 5.6% and it cost me £2.79 from B&M Bargains. Now, actually, that reminds me, I haven't turned my lights on. See these beautiful lights now? Look, there we go. Little light show for you. Don't say I don't have the content because I do. Because look at them. Um, whilst I was getting these beautiful lights for the setup from B&M Bargains back in November, I saw this on the shelf. And to be honest, it just catches the eye because they do 330 cans that are about that tall. And then you get this beast. Um, it's actually hurting my shoulder holding it up because I've got hurt. I've got a damaged shoulder. But so facts then. Um, yeah, two pound seventy nine for B&M Bargains. Facts the uh, brewer. Um, I had to do a bit of research, so I'm going to re. I had to get some notes because my memory is shot to bits. Um, I've just got a couple of notes here. Uh, Fax started in 1901 in the town of Fax in Denmark, and it's now owned by Royal Uni Brew, who own lots of breweries and randomly a soft drinks company. Um, the breweries that Royal Uni Brew own seem to be smaller, kind of Baltic breweries. They're a lot of Finland, Sweden, um, Denmark, obviously falls into their thing. But um, one thing I want to say is, look at the artwork on the can. <laughs> I think this, this could be accused of maybe being, um, how can I put this nicely, a park bench kind of beer. Um, but the artwork, they've not skimped on that. That looks mega. And this is actually the holidays edition. So I presume, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, sort of lots of Vikings and stuff. Vikings having a Christmas meal, if you can see that. And there's this random Viking, she must be cold because she's wearing a bikini. Um, but yeah, I was quite interested in it, if I'm honest. Um, I just thought I'd try it for you. Um, I'm not expecting anything. Um, it's £2.79 for a litre. Um, so what's that? If this was a 440 can, it'd be less than £1.40 a can. So I'm not expecting anything massive. Um, yeah, should we crack it open? Now, my... Oh, there we go. <laughs> no, I can't get it open. I have to open it with this because the can thing is so tight. Can I get it? There you go. Whoa, there we go, look at that. Loads of smoke. Boom. Like I say, not expecting anything big out of this for the price um, and the size. <laughs> but let's get it filled up. Obviously this is probably considered, we were talking about macro and micro lagers the other day on um, one of the live streams. This is obviously considered a macro lager, not just the size of the can, but obviously production as well. Right, as you can see, we've got a three finger white head. It's crystal clear, carbonation absolutely booming up the glass. Great head, obviously uh, very continental pour there. That was uh, luck more than judgment, I have to say. But it's a uh, straw colored beer. It's looking great, great levels of carbonation. Just looks like a, the run of the, I say the run of the mill. It looks like a kind of every, looks like every continental lager really. Crystal clear, like I say, good head retention, fluffy head. Um, let's get a nose then. Smells sort of malty, bready. Smells like it's gonna be sweet. Um, I'll have a look at the ingredients in a minute because uh, sometimes these lagers have things like classic ones, sugar, isn't it? They put sugar in a lot of things. Um, yeah, bit of, am I getting a bit of lemon? I think I'm getting a bit of lemon. I'm pretty sure it's a bit of lemon. But it's not, it's, it's more sweet. It smells, it smells very gassy because it's a lager. It's got a very gassy smell to it and you certainly get the maltiness of it. Right, that head's dying off pretty quickly so I better get in. Cheers everybody. It's not as carbonated in the mouth. I mean, the carbonation's died off a bit now. This glass hasn't got a widget. Probably would have benefited from on this beer. Um, the carbonation died off pretty quick. I 
The breadiness and the maltiness follows through into the taste. That citrus follows through, but only ever so slightly, like a lemony citrus. It's not um, overly dominating. Um, There's a, there is a bit of a metallic -y taste in there. I don't know, it could be the gas, um, but there is a bit of a metallic taste in there. It's not too bad that metallic taste, it's just that it's right at the end, it just lets you know it's there. Like I say, it could be the gas. Yeah, there, it's there. It's almost like a weird sourness to it. I have to say, it's not that bad. <laughs> For £2.79, I was like, right, this is going to be absolutely dross, but it's not dross at all. It's actually not too bad. I think if you're... The one thing I wanted to do actually opening this can is leaving it out for a little bit because I wanted to see if, you know when you go, if, has anyone been to Germany, you go to like the Oktoberfest in the UK and you get the Steins of beer which are a litre. Does anyone get, oh, it's so gassy. Well I say it's so gassy, it's playing up with me anyway. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Do you find that when you get to the bottom end, the bottom half of the Steins like really flat and nothing going on? That might be the biggest downfall of a can this size. The beer's all right. Obviously, it's nothing to write home about. It's not. I mean, it's just. I mean, look at it now. It looks pretty, pretty basic. Um, it's not. It's not obviously not craft. It's not designed to be craft at all. It's no, nowhere near that level, obviously. But um, is it better than a Foster's or a Carlin? I'd say so. Um, the Europeans normally do pretty decent lagers, especially up that neck of the woods. Uh, fin and Denmark, not Finland, Denmark and obviously um, that part of the Europe does some fantastic lagers, so it's all it's all right. If this is the worst they're drinking, then happy days. It's lost a lot of that carbonation. It's that that is bordering on flat now. I mean, it looks it too. Look at it. Don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah, I think the the problem is that this has got this has got the problem that the Steins have at like Oktoberfest and stuff. But like when I go to Munich, like I say, when I go to Munich, I sound like the go all the time. But when I went to Munich, I didn't really enjoy the Steins. It was a novelty drinking out of a glass Stein and having it all delivered like that. But that's the that is the result. And this is I poured a pint really. Um, yeah, it might be its biggest downfall, but like I say. Uh, it depends who it's aimed at. Um, I, I drink a lot of this 440 craft stuff. Um, I don't drink a lot of lagers. Um, they tend to be more the craftier end of the lagers. I love a German lager. Um, Pilsners, Czech Pilsners are lovely. German, I love your sort of German lagers like your um, Hofbrau original. Um, and Kolsch lagers. Obviously you've got the fruit Kolsch that's in the supermarket for £2.50. Um, obviously the fruit, so if we're going to compare it to the Hofbrau original let's say. Um, that's Hofbrau Originals. I'll tell you what, let's compare it to a Paul Lanner, because Paul Lanner's, the Paul Lanner Munich are Hells. That's £2 for a 500ml bottle, and it wipes the floor with this. It, this is just dead, absolutely dead. Um, it's just it's just an average lager. I like, but <laughs> I just thought the can was cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just let's, let's get a bit more in there. Liven it up a little bit. But I mean, look, that was quite a rigorous, that was quite a rigorous pour and that. Well, it's come to life a little bit, but look, it's just gonna, it's gonna go, that carbonation is not gonna last long in there at all. Um, £2.79, I don't think you can, can, can complain too much. I knew what I was getting into. I thought I'd just review it for you because it was quite fun. But it is, I'll tell you what, I haven't seen a tin like that. I mean, I'm, I'm early 30s now. So when my, mom, mom, when my mum and dad had dogs when I was a kid, they used to buy these big tins of pedigree chum dog food. And that is one yellow and red can wrap away from being a dog food tin. They must, they must in, in the town of Fax in Denmark, there's probably a dog food factory. Because <laughs> that's huge, that's ridiculous. Um, the beer then, obviously, I mean, it's not really doing too much. 
and this was a clean glass so you know obviously it's uh it's just died of death in there um It's a little bit citrusy. It's a little bit biscuity. It's a little bit metallic. And it's just a little bit boring. <laughs> it's just a lager. This isn't. I have to say, disclaimer. This isn't the sort of lager I would normally drink. This is kind of. This is going to be in the same ballpark as Foster's, Carling. I'm not going to say Stella. Um, Carlsberg can end up in here as well. It's just bang average. Um, £2.79 then. The novelty is in there for me. I think the can design is awesome. Um, the Vikings at Christmas dinner. I think that's really, really cool. Um, overall, for £2.79, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. It's not horrible at all. Um, and to be honest, I think it fits a budget really well. Um, obviously, we're after Christmas now. I know a lot of people struggle after Christmas. So if you're watching this and you are struggling after Christmas money-wise and you just want to get a few beers in for Friday... Get that, it's £2.79 out of being in bargains. I think it works really, really well. Right then, three out of five, there we go. Um, Just a little one, randomly, we are fast approaching 200 subscribers. So if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please consider hitting that button. Um, we're growing at a crazy rate, something that just like would, it's just blowing my mind, really. Um, you got If you have subscribed, thank you so much. And if you're watching this, obviously you are, thank you. Um, it's just mega. I didn't know what I was getting into when I started this. Um, to, to think where, I think we're, nine subscribers away from 200 is absolutely mega um let me know if you've had this beer and let me know what you thought of it um i think it's a comparison like i say i think it's in competition with your fosters and your carling um let me know what you think i can i can see that this definitely got a place in the market i'm not going to slate it um it's just not too bad and if you could hit that like button as well i'd really appreciate it uh you guys were absolutely bang on it for the last video uh which was the beers and gears episode one if you didn't see it i went out uh, I went out to Surrey, chatted to my mate Liam, who's got four absolutely beautiful motorbikes, and we reviewed. Where is it gone? Where's it gone? Yeah, and we reviewed this beer. This is a different can, <laughs> but yeah, we reviewed Northern Star, Def, uh, Northern Monk, Death Star episode two, um, and we really enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves. Cheers.